Hello, it's Dave Herman here, alias Daz the Artist, at 10.47 a.m. So we have 10 minutes from 10.47 to do our daily sketch. It's uh, May 8th, 2017, and I've begun a little cicada fly. Uh, I was going to show you how I drew this, but my cell phone kept going off, and it was rude, and it kept dinging and buzzing, and I had to take the call. It was from uh, one of my sons. Okay. Now... I've got uh, background line work, a few layers set up. So I drew the background as the background. You can see that if I turn it off. And I put the fly on there. Ah, the cicada's on there. Okay, so it really doesn't matter. These are quick daily sketches. I save them for prosperity, but they're never going to be used again, and they're more, more than likely going to just get chucked out. So, okay. So let's take a, a red right there. And we're going to start filling in the eyes, and I'm going to draw and uh, and work on this in front of you, and that's going to be cool. So, there we go. There's a bug eye of a cicada, and then the other one kind of sits. I really did want to show you my my drawing of this, but there's so many dinging and bingings in the uh, background that was just too darn rude. Okay, and I just pencil sketched this out, you know, digitally. So there's uh, two little red spots. Now we're going to put some highlights in those eyes. Uh, let's see here. So we got to get this brush really tiny when the eye is tiny. And we do a little, just a little kind of a thing there. And then it kind of, after it hits it, it kind of spreads like that around the rim. And then out here you have a little more rectangular one, kind of almost a little hot spot and uh, you see we got these nice blends in there I like those already and then there's a little black thing in the middle of the eye and I forget what they call these in the insect eyes and I should know because I'm also in the process of writing a science fiction book and some of my evil characters are insectoid so let's just uh, forget what they call these but that's in there like so. And then you want to texture up the head a little bit. So since we're not in Verve, where you can readily get to these brushes you normally see me use, like the pastel chalks and stuff, uh, I'm going to do it a different way here. And that's like i got to paint it. <laughs> so um, first, I'm going to... Change the opacity down a little bit in the uh, to here. We're going to do his face and we're going to do an arm. And then I'll see if I want to do a part two. I don't know. You know, time permitting and all that. Okay. So let's just rough in some texture face. Remember, when you lift your brush up, you can hit the color again and it gets darker. If you hold it down, it stays the same uh, density, opacity, weight, everything, till you lift it. And then you can come back. So that's how you get these nice blends of thousand shades of a particular color. Is you can do like this, see? Then you can come back, and if you wanted a divot here, you can do that, and so on. And they do have some kind of weird uh, divots in cicadas that invade Princeton University. I'm just telling you there's some cicadas down there, because that's where this photo I'm using as a reference on the other screen says it's from Princeton University. Right on. <laughs> Cheerio. Just keep training politicians and stockbrokers. That's what I say to those Ivy League schools that can figure out how to steal from us. Because that's the game plan, isn't it, rich guys? Hmm? Yeah, you know it is. You know it. You know it. Don't even... Don't even faint like you don't think it is. Because if it wasn't, you'd have no incentive to go there. Incentive is to get the moolah. You're a bunch of cicada flies. You hide, you wake up, and then you pester us. <laughs> Politics? Right, I'm a pirate. A pirate? Yeah, pirate, yes. Pirate. Okay. Clowning around after a couple coffees is my game. And we got a little bit of that going. So now let's get an antenna in there. 
For that, I would go to 100% opacity to make a hard line. And that's going to kind of come off in this area here, like that. And there's a little bit of a thicker piece. And then you can do your thinner piece like that. Okay, that's kind of cool. Now, uh, yeah, I'm actually drawing, as you see, in Photoshop. The interesting thing about creatures is, like, when you look at a bird behind his eyes and stuff, the feathers are in, like, a gill pattern. When you look at these uh, creatures that you see, like a cicada, even though it has this headpiece, it is reminding me of gills. Everything I look at reminds me, I really believe that life came from the sea. And uh, what a curious factor, indeed, for us to observe. Now, let's put the, let's go back to a lesser opacity here. Because I jump back and forth from Verve to Photoshop, I'm actually getting some skills. One day, I'm going to be good at this. And that's all I can recommend, people, is this has come about by me doing a daily sketch of at least one, possibly three a day, because I get sucked into it. You know, one of these is not enough. Like, I can't really show you any art. And so I say, okay, I'll go to two. And if I don't get enough done in two of them in two 10-minute sessions, I'm forced to do a third uh, or walk away and just post it. But, you know, just so you can see, I'm so fascinated by art. Uh, been my whole life and by insects and and the sky everything that exists on the earth you know has a attraction to me um, quite a mysterious fellow so um, now I'm starting to understand how even more so than I did before the nothing becomes something and that's the key to it all if you understand how the nothing becomes something you know, I'm not really a cut and paste guy. You see these guys that, that do stuff, they have to do it because it's commercial. Uh, you got to get things out by timelines and so on. And so you see people cut and paste uh, backgrounds uh, for movies and backgrounds for computer programs and all that stuff. And that's fine. I mean, that's what, you know, photographs are for. And then you kind of just work some magic in Photoshop or something to blend it in and call it your art. But uh, drawing from scratch uh, has a little more meaning to me. Um, yes, it takes time. And if I was in a paying job, I think they could wait for me to do some of this cool stuff, to be honest with you. Because it has a different feel than if you cut and paste something... Um, that you find on the internet into a drawing and then just put some shading on it and stuff and say, oh, look what I drew. Well, you didn't really draw that. I mean, we can tell when we look at it on the internet, you didn't really draw that. And uh, this is, of course, the hard way to do stuff. There's no fast way about it. But, and it's a big but, is that you've got to develop some talent. And... Uh, <laughs> I was a traditional painter. It's taking me a slow four to five years to teach myself how to transition the techniques I used as a fine arts painter to the computer so I know where to find the tool. It's not I'm a digital painter now and I need digital tools so much as I'm applying the techniques I use, let's say I was drawing with a pencil right here, I'm a mixed media kind of guy, then I picked up a chalk, then I picked up oil paint, then I might have picked up Conti Crayon. You know, that kind of stuff is what you got to get to, get to uh, transition over in. So you say, I want that feel like I'm looking at chalk, or I want it feel like I'm looking at a, the highlight. Um, you know, that I, that I put on there, let's say, with um, an acrylic paint or something. So, I don't know. It's chatter. Doesn't matter. <laughs> shaboom. Shaboom me. Hey, it's a good day. Spring is here. And, of course, everybody, including myself, is coming out of their winter doldrums. 
because at the end it just about cracks you every year and you go I can't take it <laughs>